Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Jacksonville, just north of the square, in a building that was a shoe factory turned car dealership and now kind of a collector's dream. And we're gonna go through this, uh, this old factory uh, in just a moment with the man who, the collector who I just mentioned, Jack Lukeman. Jack, you've lived in Jacksonville for a long time and you've been collecting for a long time. And years ago when this building became, became uh, available, you probably said to yourself, you know what, I could probably fill that thing up. And I did. <laughs> it did. It didn't take you <laughs> it didn't long. Didn't take did long it? at all. Oh no, my goodness. We had it filled. Oh, be darn. You know, and we're standing in what would have been the showroom it was of, of a dealership. Time, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so that's kind of what you use it for. Unfortunately, the showroom's not big enough for you. You've got no. to use the shop and, and the mechanics area well and everything. The whole place. You, it's it's incredible. Yeah. Um, how? I, I, we'll get into into this mania, this collecting mania. Have you done it all your life? All my life. Really? You've always been a collector. I think I mentioned one time the school teacher I saw, my PE teacher in grade school, he said, Jack, I saw him 50 years later, he said, you still collect junk? And I said, well, <laughs> I like to think it's a little more than junk. He said, years ago, all the kids would be playing basketball, and here you'd come with a wagon load of stuff on the way to school that you picked up in the trash. I said, well, I'm still looking. <laughs> so, yeah, I've done it pretty much all my life. If you're either finding it or it's finding yeah, it you, you don't me. really know. Exactly, okay. well, both ways, yeah. You know, you got some really uh -oh. in interesting things here, and I just want to step out of the way mm -hmm. so we can see this red car. Now, I had heard the name Crosley before, mm -hmm. but I didn't know they made cars. Crosley made cars uh, in the late 30s, and then they quit and uh, started again in 1946. This is a 51, it's about the end of the line. I think they mm -hmm. went through 52. They made radios, refrigerators. Uh, they were in Cincinnati, <coughs> Ohio, and uh, quite a company. They made just about everything, I guess. They made everything. And, and, and people uh, that remember old baseball, I mean, Crosley mm -hmm. Field was a probably yeah. named for the same family, named I for assume. Pal Crosley. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, boy, this is kind of a, let's move in there a little mm -hmm. bit and take a look at this, because this is, this is really nifty. This uh, car is a low mileage, I think it's 22,000 miles, which is kind of unusual on these. Most of them got beat up pretty bad mm -hmm, over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, Most of the cars you have in here actually will run. You can get them started and they'll pretty run. Pretty much every, there's three or four in the back that, yeah. that, that won't run. Uh -huh. uh, but, um, uh, it's but, a constant deal to keep them running. Um, I like this little piece back here, and in fact, mm -hmm. you told me that this little four-wheeler is pretty darn rare. You, they're hard to find, aren't they? I've only seen one other one, and that was just recently on eBay. I don't know. Um, Montgomery Ward sold those back in the late 40s, early <laughs> 50s. That's cute. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's unusual. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in the 50s, and I would have thought that I'd have seen those on the street. Man. But you know what? I didn't. I don't remember I don't those. remember having one. It's really uh, nifty. But... Uh, and this is an all-aluminum bicycle. It's kind of an oddball. Uh, this is what by, we're looking at here. Yeah, right? that's made by Stearman. That, and you can see it's got the chain, it's got the gears mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. So. And the, and the little midget cars. I, you know, I like these two on the end. Well, these are pedal cars. These mm -hmm. are. This would have been in the 50s, uh, 60s. This was back in the 20s. And this is just a reproduction. So and you can see what that would look like if it were finished up. what it should up, look huh? like if I ever fixed it. If you, if you ever get around <laughs> to it, huh? It's pretty. The finished one's really pretty, isn't it? Well, yeah. That's made in China. Yeah. Now, right <laughs> behind you, Jack, mm -hmm. I want to I draw attention to this because we don't see many of these. This Jeep is not a Willys Jeep, as w no. the ones we're, we're custom seeing from mm -hmm. this period. It was made by Ford, which makes it kind of unusual, doesn't it? This is a Ford Jeep, uh, 1941. Uh, they didn't make too many, especially of this model. Um, actually, the first Jeep was a Bantam, American Bantam, mm -hmm. uh, made in Pennsylvania, and then the Ford came along, and eventually Willys took over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, at one time we had a whole fleet of Willys Jeeps. Mm -hmm. And this little Jeep here, mm -hmm. which before we get too far away from it, Back in the, I guess, what, 50 years ago, there was a Springfield store that uh, that, that sold almost everything. Sold, as I remember, they had car parts. Uh, it was a bar. 
Uh, it's about Stanford and 6th Street, mm -hmm. I think. And when the gentleman passed away, they found all these cars in the attic. And this happened to be one this of them. This little Jeep. Little Jeep. And this has an internal combustion engine, doesn't it? It's got it? a motor. It's got a drive shaft. Uh, kind of cool. It is kind of cool. And I don't know. The neighbor lady said he'd had it made for his nephew. I don't know. <laughs> so it had been there so long that the tires turned to coal. We had to cut them <laughs> off with a chainsaw. <laughs> But you couldn't resist it. No, yeah, no. couldn't resist it. Um, in the rest of this building, I, I'd love to see everything. But 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 you don't. You dedicate most of this building to cars that you have collected. Pretty much, uh, we've got toys in one area, and we've got clothing store things in Juke another. Boxes. Juke you've boxes. got. Uh, we'll we'll yeah. see a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. But it's that's all in the other room. So let's walk around that way. Mm -hmm. Jack, I think our audience is going to see that they have a few signs in your collection, too, and we'll get to those a little bit later okay. on. But, but, but one of the first cars you see when you come in is this beautiful old em emerald green 51 Kaiser. And people always ask about this appendage on the window, don't they? They always want they to know what's that. They seem to go right that? to that. And uh, <laughs> when I tell them what it is, they don't uh, really understand. It's an air conditioner. Uh, this happens to be a Firestone. Uh, back in the day, you would fill this full of ice water. Mm -hmm before you headed down the highway. Mm -hmm. And it blew air through here and in the inside the car. Mm -hmm. And that's the way you cooled it. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it only lasted but it's better than nothing. Nothing. 30 minutes, it was a relief. Yeah, it was sure. just a relief, yeah. It didn't help in uh, traffic when you were stopped. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have to, then you'd have to, yeah, when you're stopped, it stops. <laughs> you couldn't roll the window yeah. down. <laughs> you were done. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, the wife, and then the wife gets it on her yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. you just want that for long trips. <laughs> <laughs> As we move along, now we're going to kind of cover some of this in chronological mm -hmm. order, uh, roughly, anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the first, the next thing you see here is this. Now, this, of course, wasn't motorized. This would have been pulled, what, by a horse or something? This was actually a store display that we used. It's a mock up of probably one of the very earliest cars. This is what they looked like. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. This is not one, but uh, uh -huh. they looked just like that. Uh -huh. And then they progressed on to. Bigger and better. Yeah, on onto what you see next here, and you've you've mm -hmm. got. Uh, let's see, what is this? This is a Ford, this is a Ford it's right? It's a 1913 Model T. Um, 1913. Mm -hmm. That's really old. That's old. Uh, it's got the uh, first thing people say is it's not black, and all Model Ts were black. Mm -hmm. Actually, this was the last year you could buy a car with color in a Model T, and then they went to black. So this is blue. It's, it's uh, a real dark navy, and dark you really navy. Ba can barely tell that uh -huh. it's not black. Yeah. No, but it's not black. It's got this on this. This is a carbide generator. They put water in that and carbide. Point that out again for us, will you? Uh, right okay. there. They put water in that, and what happened? Carbide, uh -huh. and it formed a gas, and it went through rubber hoses up here to your headlights. So then you light oh. your headlights with that gas. Mm -hmm. These were full of kerosene here. These up, uh -huh. up here. These were kerosene uh -huh. lights. Okay. So it had the carbide light and the. Isn't uh, that something? And of course, no starter. You had to crank yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a so, treasure. A 1913. I, mean, well, I don't know that I've seen one that old. It's the earliest I've had. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, we used to drive it. I haven't driven it for quite a few years. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, this was a later Model T. This is a 25. Uh, it's got the starter. It's got the electric lights. Mm -hmm. The horn. Um, so in that in that uh, eight years, they made a lot of advancements, especially just on the lighting more than they they, they changed it quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I would have probably uh, those gas lights ran up into the fifteen sixteen era maybe, mm -hmm. and then they went to electric. We I've had that since I was. 12, 13 Did you ever get old. this one out running? Oh, yeah. We used to drive that all. <laughs> oh, yeah. When we were kids, we and drove it. And a 30 it. Model A. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is a step up from the Model T. They started mm -hmm. those in 1928. Look where this horn, look where this horn uh -huh. is down here. The uh, <laughs> much more advanced car than the Model T. Uh, it competed with the Chevrolets who were coming on strong in that era. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Henry Ford, I just read a story. He didn't want to give the Model T up, and he and his son had quite a battle over it to devise a new car, mm -hmm. and the son finally won out. Thank goodness, or they might have been gone. You even get you even get your license plates to be genuine. Illinois 30, I imagine that means well, 1930, right? That's, yeah. 
we've got a lot of license plates around here. <laughs> Lots of license plates. A 1926 plates. Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. And this was like, I guess this was one of the first, well, I would call it a panel truck of some kind. Huh? This was a panel truck, uh, factory built. Uh, it was a laundry truck up in uh, Minnesota when I got it. Huh. Uh, so yeah, we used to use it in parades and mm -hmm. such. And uh, so this will run too? Oh yeah. Now what was yeah. the water bag for? Oh, I just stuck that on there because I didn't have any place to put it. <laughs> But again, now that's the cool water, see, on the highway, mm -hmm. I guess, and for drinking or a desert, put it in the radio. Desert got water to bag. <laughs> yeah. So you got the Chevrolets and the Fords, and then we got, now I haven't even heard of this brand, an Oakland, a 1929 Oakland. 1929 Oakland. This was the forerunner of the Pontiac. Um, Oakland was around for years back in the early teens. Mm -hmm. and, um, this particular car, was at the Imperial Palace collection out in Las Vegas. Uh, we brought it back here. Um, pretty much original other than the paint. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they they stayed around probably another year or two and, and then they disappeared. And we'll mention one more thing before mm -hmm. we take a little break here. We've also got a nice row of Thunderbirds here. And uh, this one, this is uh, 59, that goes back to what, what's 59, 59, 56. 56. Uh, you like those Thunderbirds, yeah. Huh? Well, they came in four series. They had the 55 through seven, and they had in the uh, 58 mm -hmm. through 60, which was this one. Then they went 61 through 63, which is that one down there. Mm -hmm. 64 through 66. They kept getting bigger and bigger, didn't they? Bigger, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I've always liked Thunderbirds. Jack, I would wager that a lot of people who live in St. Louis haven't even heard of the Moon Car, which oh, was made in St. Louis. I'm sure they haven't. Um, it was made uh, a lot of years in St. Louis. That happens to be a 27 model. Uh, that's about the end of the run. Um, original old car, uh, it's never been restored. Uh, we have a Moon Club in St. Louis, mm -hmm. probably 80 members, and uh, so yeah, it's it's kind of interesting when you read back on the history of the Moon and the Moon family. Uh, the Moon family mansion is still there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's kind of a cool car. Yeah, most of the most of the cars were named after after the person that invented or built right. them. This um, was Joseph Moon. Like I, I assume Packard was as well, and that's what we're looking at now is, is a Packard. You know, that I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. I think it was, you know, mm -hmm. back in the early 1909 area, mm -hmm. uh, a Packard. What year is this one that we're looking this at This is here? a 49. A 49. Mm -hmm. Boy, they were big. And heavy. Yeah, they look really heavy. Have you ever tried to push one by hand? I, I love <laughs> I love that little child seat that you, uh, that you bought for that car. That would have been just about from 1949. That right? would have been about that era, maybe a little <laughs> later than that. But yeah, I don't think it passed muster today. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Picked it up for a buck, did you? <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we've got, I, I've always heard of Pierce. I love this sign, too. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned earlier that the audience was going to notice a lot of signs when we went through this mm -hmm. program. There's so many signs in your shop here that you stop noticing them after a while. Well, but when you find them, they thrill you, don't they? Well, I, I tried. I should have bought them back in the day when you could afford to buy them. Today, it's pretty tough. Is that but, right? Uh, yeah, they're expensive. There's a lot of there's a lot of attention now to to keepsakes and collecting mm -hmm. and like like pickers, for instance. Well, that really put a lot of antique lot road of shows on. changed sure, a lot of that, you sure. know. So yeah. Uh, uh, but I thought it'd be a good place for it with a couple of Pierce Absolutely. arrows. Absolutely, and you've got three here. Pierce arrows right no, here. No, I just got two. You got two. Uh -huh. Okay, and these are these are two we're looking at here. Those are okay. Pierce arrows. They're what, right what, out of the barn. What, uh, right out of somebody's barn. Mm -hmm. huh? What's what's what about this one? Uh, this is a V12. It's a it's a rare car. There are not many of them around. It needs complete restoration, mm -hmm. which would be very expensive. Uh, I've never tried to start it or mm -hmm. do anything with it. It's um, just been in here and. Mm -hmm. uh, the blue one we did have Let's running. Let's move down a little and, bit so we uh, can see that. You had this one running. This, this one, one is running. We're waiting to change the glass out, uh, uh -huh. put new glass in it, and then we'll paint it. Mm -hmm. it's, so. it's, gore it's got a lot of, they have a very classic look, don't oh. they? Nothing else really looked like a piercer. They were uh, better than a Cadillac back in the day. Mm -hmm. They were the top of the line and uh, heavy, well-built cars. And I love these hood ornaments. Because That's the archer. Uh, yeah, isn't with that classic? Arrow and, uh, that was their trademark. Mm -hmm. Well, Jack, mm -hmm. we can move from this.
from this Packard uh -huh. to an earlier vehicle, and boy, you've got this one really looking good. This Chevrolet 1936, uh, that's what they call a Coupe Express. It's got a bed in the back instead of a trunk. Uh, not many of them around. This was before they even invented the word pickup truck, probably. Well, they well, had, they, they, they called did it have an pickups. Express, huh? uh, oh, they did have pickups, uh, huh? Um, this was, I don't know what the version would have been, but yeah. uh, this thing's geared like a truck. Mm -hmm. So it's not just something that somebody built. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, called an Express, so that's, you mm -hmm. could use that for, uh, for cargo space. Mm -hmm. Now, you haven't had this car very long, and you don't see very many yellow yellow cars. Uh, it's, it's a Buick. It's a Buick. It ref it refresh my memory, what year is it? 1939. 39. Uh-huh. It's a four-door Phaeton. Uh, we just got the seats put in it and uh, about ready to put the top on it. What's, what's unusual about a Phaeton? Well, it's a four-door convertible. There's not too many of those. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a big car. It's, it's long and heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of parades, that type of thing. Yeah. You can see that you've got the new seats. I mean, you've done a good job with the yeah, new the seats. Yeah, the seats were rough. The not, car was good. You're not finished yet, but, but they, no. uh, they look good. They look like you're making uh -huh. headway. So we'll get that wrapped up, hopefully. And of course, the, the tops on these convertibles always rot. You always have oh, to yeah. find new tops yeah. for them. The but look at all the gone. wood. Look at all the wood that's, uh, that's in this in this car. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not going to be an easy job to put it on, no, but I've got yeah. a guy that can do it. Yeah. So. Terrific. Jack, we're, we're about to make, make the turn from coming from those old cars down down, I guess I'd call it Tin Pan Alley or whatever. Uh -huh. <laughs> looks like it's it. or a junkyard, but I don't know what. No, it looks terrific. <laughs> I mean, but the signs and the colors and the lights and everything, it's just, um, it's just, uh, it's a lot of fun. Well, I enjoy it. <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm crazy, but I enjoy and it. you're not just about cars. Now look well, at this. This is the coolest little boat. Isn't that cute? That's a 1955 Aristocraft. They were made in Atlanta area, Atlanta area. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, I've never had it in the water, so I don't know if it'll float, but, but I like you know, it. But you know, you said it's a 55? Mm -hmm. At the time that this thing was in the water, it had a 90 horsepower engine on it. When I purchased it, they had, it had a 90 horse on it. Can you imagine how no. fast this thing would have gone? <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to think about it. It probably doesn't weigh much. No, it doesn't. And I would think it would have blown right out of the water. <laughs> but uh, I didn't want that big motor. Well, listen, we need to we need mm. to take that out someday, okay? Oh, that'd be fun, yeah. It'd be a lot of fun. Corvair. Corvair. Yeah, uh -huh. we had one growing up. Rear engine. Yeah, that's a 66. Air cool. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And what about this little guy here? This is cute. Well, this started out as a Crosley, uh, 1949. Uh, okay, we learned about Crosleys earlier. It's the yeah. uh, bottom of a Crosley, and somebody's had plans. The magazines used to sell them, and uh, they've made a speech out of it. And it, it runs and drives. Mm -hmm. I bet uh, it's fun, isn't it? Well, not for me. I can't get my knees <laughs> in it. To, your legs I are too long. I can't get my huh? feet in it. No. <laughs> but uh, off, off to our right, you can see, okay, now you've got your, you've got your gas station set up here with mm -hmm. your old pumps. And above that, the Wareco, everybody recognizes the old Wareco sign up right. there. That's got some Jacksonville sentimentality Jacksonville to it. Jacksonville was the headquarters, uh, the Ware family. Some of them still here. Uh -huh. And uh, yes. Uh, I've got quite a bit of Wareco memorabilia. If we had time, we'd go in there and knock around in that little, uh, in the little gas station little there. Gas but, station. Uh, you know, it's just a little gas station. <laughs> little right? gas station. That's all it is. <laughs> now, a lot of people were going to remember these cars from, mm -hmm. uh, from I don't know what they call midget cars. What are they? This midget was race a midget. Cars? This was a midget from probably 19. Are you looking at the white one? The white one. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, and then this is a sprint car over here. The, this was this probably, one down here is a sprint car. It was a probably. Uh, in the 40s, somebody switched it out and put a Chevrolet motor in it. It probably had a Ford motor in it mm -hmm, originally. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, they're old race cars. Now, right above and behind it, there's a sign mm -hmm. that says, Big Car Races Jacksonville Fairground. Is, uh -huh. is that what we're talking about? That would be oh, this type okay. of car. Okay. Uh -huh. And those really drew, didn't they? Oh, back in the day, uh, as you can see down here, you will. Uh, huge crowds back in the 50s, mm -hmm. these kind of cars. We're, we're uh, talking about the blue and yellow one This now? type thing, uh, it's what we raced here in Jacksonville and Pittsfield, uh, all around Springfield Speedway. And, and what kind of cars is called now? Well, they just called them stock cars stock back car. when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I think I saw in the paper they had 14,000 people there one night. Is that right? 
Yeah. In Jacksonville. In Jacksonville. So. And this is this a picture from Jacksonville. That's a picture from Jacksonville. Uh huh. That Probably gives you an idea. You could put that the track. If you put people all around the track, you could sure fit that many in. Well, there. they had them all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't do that anymore. They do race here, but not uh, not this type of course. Yeah. That that was in the that was in the days when 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 cars people were so fascinated with cars, stock cars and anything to do with cars sure. because I mean there were improvements weren't being made so fast. And and the midgets right after the war really took off. They raced them in ball fields, they had stadiums in Chicago. Mm -hmm. People didn't have television, they didn't have mm -hmm. air conditioning. Mm -hmm. You know, so they went out and went to the car races. Mm -hmm. And yep. uh, so it's it's all different but uh, loud and dusty mm -hmm. and but it was something to do. Then we got a soapbox derby up there, and some some cities still run the soapbox derbies. You know, Quincy has rejuvenated theirs. Oh, they really? have, yeah, they do. They have kids well, building their own soapbox. That's great. Now, as long as we're looking this way, uh -huh. let's take a look over here. I don't know where you find something like this or how you move it into your <laughs> into your place. But what what in the world? Well, this is a. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Creeders popcorn wagon that started out uh, made in Chicago back in probably 1910, this one. Mm -hmm. We bought it out of a salvage yard out in uh, New Hampshire and brought it back in pieces and uh, that was a labor of love. This I, is not, <laughs> yeah, but this is not a little things. thing. This thing weighs, a, look how uh, well built it is. It weighs a lot. Got a lot of steel in it and we had to replace a lot of steel in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, I just always liked them. And do, do you ever? Do, does your wife ever t uh, ask you what are we going to do with that? Uh, my son does when he comes home. What are we going to do with all this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I tell him it's his problem. Well, so someday he's going to inherit all this, right? <laughs> he doesn't want it, believe me. <laughs> uh, well, let's listen. I bought that ice cream wagon for him. I was going to put him uptown with it, but I, I decided <laughs> that'd be more me than him. So <laughs> I love that. I didn't, you know, I didn't even notice that it was a bicycle. I uh -huh. thought it was. A, yeah. Isn't that neat? That was. That's really the old days. That's the old timer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Jack. From cars to music. How, do, how does how does that happen? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, I liked it, so I bought it. This is and an this old is, this an old, old Victrola, Victrola yeah, lined up. Yeah. Uh, uh, as we were talking about, you asked about the volume control. Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, I just learned this myself. The when doors. they're closed, uh -huh. yeah, it's it's real quiet, right? Right. And then if you want more volume, you open the door. You open them all the way. Uh -huh. If you want a little less volume, do that, huh? <laughs> so you don't have to no worry about a switch or a knob or anything Perfect. going bad on Perfect. you. Yeah. This is cool too. Look at this. This is the this is the record cleaner, uh, rust off or dust off record cleaner. It, it's just a mm -hmm. piece of felt. Piece of felt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Neat as that. And these uh, others, you got, you've got. They're uh, tabletops. Mm -hmm, uh, same mm -hmm. type thing. Suitcase models. You've got and, now those. Uh, you could just carry to a party right. with you if you wanted mm -hmm. to, or from room to room, Any wherever place. you were. Sure. Those are nifty. Yeah. And uh, and jukeboxes too. Jukeboxes. That's a Wurlitzer there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I've ever seen one that old before. That that plays seventy eights, I guess. That plays seventy eights. Mm -hmm. The uh, one next to it is a Mills. It plays a seventy eight. That one I noticed that Mills was uh, six plays for a quarter. Six for a quarter. You really get your money's uh, worth. And they also made slot machines, so they got quarters in slots and the jukeboxes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and then, then Seaberg. Yeah. That you, you heard you heard Wurlitzer and Seaberg. Mm -hmm. I didn't never heard of Mills before. Well, Mills Seaberg. probably not many jukeboxes. Mm -hmm. uh, the Seaberg they call that model the trash can. There's a lot of them around. It does look uh, like a trash can, it's doesn't it? Model after a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> and I know there's Pat Pat Boone is on that one oh. among other artists. Yeah. That was five plays for a quarter. And then uh -huh. the most modern one you have here. It looks like this might have been from the 60s or 70s. This was, and, yes, and it's a 45 machine. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, mm -hmm. So, <laughs> is that okay? And then we step out here, and there's something there. I didn't know this was rare or a collector's item until you brought it to my attention. But everybody, of course, remembers the Roy Rogers show. Roy Rogers. And you're a seasoned collector. You say this is the only one of these you've ever seen. I've seen pictures. I've just never come across them. They're out there. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, I've never seen one uh, other than this. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's Explain original. Explain what Nelly Bell is. Well, the Nelly Bell was the Jeep that the sidekick of Roy drove. He didn't have a horse, so he drove a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he chased the horses in this Jeep. He must have felt like a real well, name I think so. I've been embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> this little pedal car. <laughs> okay, and then we've got uh, 
I, you know, I always, I used to always admire these because in the 60s, I, I would see these putting around town mm -hmm. and always wondered about them. And I didn't know that they were made in England. They were shipped over here and sold through the Nash Hudson dealerships. And uh, this one's a 59 model, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that's, they ran through 62. Uh, and uh, so this would be one of the latter ones. Mm -hmm. Started in 54. When, when you got this little guy, he, he wasn't looking too good, was he? No, it was not in very good shape. And uh, my wife had told me years ago she wanted a small convertible for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we rolled this into the yard <laughs> Christmas Eve and put a bow on it. And it was not very pretty at the time. And she's <laughs> not happy, but she likes it now. What? So yep. what'd she say when she saw the bow she on it? She said, somebody's dragging an old car in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's your Christmas. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Here you uh -huh. go, honey. Merry so Christmas. Anyway, she likes it better now. No, that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. You can take it out and drive it and yeah, take it the top down. Top yeah. down, yeah. Jack, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Glad to have you. It's been a, it's been a real back pleasure. And see us. Uh, you know, Jack Lukeman, this is not a museum, and this is not open for public tours. At the same time, he does appreciate other collectors and uh, car groups. So if you know Jack and you get a chance to ask him, he just might give you a show through this wonderful collection. With another Illinois Story in Jacksonville, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.